This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and today I am bringing you yet another entertainment interview, uh, courtesy of Impact PR in New York. Um, and when Beatrice sent me this information, I read it wrong, so I'm really glad that I had talked to Lauren Teslitz before we got started, because uh, both she and Danny Ursetti uh have worked on an album and this album is for a play, but the album's coming out before the play is being staged. Did I get that right? Yep. You got that right. <laughs> <laughs> so Lauren, does it happen very often? Cause typically I would think we'd run out to get the album after we either saw the play or friends who had seen it told us about it. Right. I would say um, it's atypical to see an album produced before there's a production. Um, I think it's more common now, especially probably since the pandemic, since people have the capacity to, you know, produce things at home. But there are lots of good reasons that it's easier to do it after to do it after the finished production. <laughs> it's much easier. Like you actually know what's in the show. You um, have heard the orchestrations before you actually record them. You know there are advantages <laughs> to having people uh, more familiar and better rehearsed than <laughs> it might have been for us. But um, it was it was it's it's a way to create awareness of a show and. It's, I mean, we have a two person musical and there aren't a lot of those and it's very relatable. And this show sort of fills a hole in that it's about a middle aged woman who's also a mom who, despite the fact that she's a middle aged mom, is still a person that wants things and sets out on a quest to get them. Um, and, you know, it's also a way for us to get our work out there and our names out there. Absolutely. Yeah. So how long have you and Danny been working together? Is this the first time or has this been going on for years? We, we've actually, we met at the Graduate Musical Theater Writing Program at NYU in, was that 2015, 2016, uh, where everyone's paired to write together before you choose who you're going to write your final thesis with. And we kind of just hit it off after our first assignment together. And then in, in our second year, in Bill Finn had a lyric writing class, Bill Finn of Falsettos and Spelling Bee, um, the musicals. Uh, he was basically like, Danny, you're setting all of Lauren's lyrics, which I was happy to do because I think she has such a clear, funny voice. Uh, and it's so easy to work with her. So, um, yeah, so I guess we've been writing together. Re the songs for Regretting Almost Everything, this show, this album, uh, are some of the first songs we we wrote together. Okay, sounds wonderful. And, you know, when I read what the play is about, um, I was really excited for a number of reasons. But the main reason... Um, I do a show called Avoid the Maze. Mm -hmm. And really, it's about all of us who are on a journey. And many, I would say a good majority of us wake up one day and say, is this a journey? Because this is not what I really think I want to do. Um, and some of us are brave enough to go and do what we want to do. And others say, no, you know, I'm too old. I have other responsibilities. So when I heard about this, I said, oh, finally, we're telling the truth on stage. <laughs> uh, it's called Regetting, Regretting Almost Everything. And uh, boy, very relatable. <laughs> so how does songwriting um, happen? And the reason I'm asking, I have a son who um, writes lyrics, but he doesn't play an instrument. He hears the sound in his head. He sort of goes out and looks for other pieces of music that sound like it. And then he sends it to his producer uncle and says, okay, 
this is sort of what I want to sound like. Here are the lyrics. Let's put it together. To me, that sounds very convoluted. But how do the two of you work together to make sure everything sort of meshes? Uh, well, you know, as they say, every collaboration is different. And ours has evolved. I mean, we've worked pretty consistently and intensely over the last six or seven years. Um, usually, we at least start with part of a lyric. I mean, when we first started writing together, I would send what I thought was a fully formed, absolutely perfect, you know, structurally perfect, written, uh, written you know, rhyme wise, perfect lyric. But I don't do that so much anymore because now it's a, it's even within the songwriting a more collaborative process. If I send Danny a lyric that's not singing for him or that he's having trouble setting or where he wants more or less, I would rather find that out earlier in the process sure. and hear what he wants the music to be because ultimately we want the best song. And honestly, I think people care more about the music than the words, <laughs> and I spent years writing music first. Um, so I actually don't mind figuring out how to make a lyric fit the music that he thinks is, is best. Um, so for I us, there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of sure. back and forth. And we're and we're writing for the theater, so we're usually also writing, you know with our perspective, but we're writing for a character's perspective and for a specific moment and always trying to move the story forward. So you're either learning about character. That's the difference between kind of like pop writing and theater writing is we we have a specific goal um, to achieve with each song. So something that a novice like me has no concept of, and I love you to explaining that to me, um, because again, as I said to Lauren before we went on, there are certain show albums that are out there, but yet when I've listened to them and have seen the show, I'll say, well, that song is not in the performance. And uh, and I've always wondered, but now I understand that sometimes it's put together and the show says it just doesn't fit or time-wise, it may just not fit as well. So I take it you're both from New York. Am I correct? Because you were at NYU together? No. <laughs> uh, no, no. I'm I'm from Southern California, but I moved to New York to go to grad school. Okay. And Lauren, where are you located? I'm in Chicago, but I left my husband and children and mother and family and friends to go to New York to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> so you had that journey that you needed to change as well correct i had found something i really loved doing and i i mean i was in my mid 50s so and it can take 10 to 20 years you know to make a musical happen so i knew it was kind of stupid but <laughs> i also thought if i lived another 30 years you know danny's heard me say this there was nothing i'd rather do and i thought my best chance of sort of success and upping my game was going to school at NYU because there was nowhere else to to get that MFA in musical theater writing. So I had to go to New York. I had no choice. I had to go to New York. <laughs> well, that's the one thing. We all have choices, but when we have those choices, um, sometimes it's difficult to take that new path, but for many of us, it's very important. And again, 15 years ago, I never would have thought I would have left my corporate America job um, because, hey, am I really supposed to be happy now or can I wait until I'm <laughs> 65 or 70? And I realized, no, I couldn't wait any longer. So tell me a little bit about the music that you wrote for a play that is not playing. Um, how did you determine some of the songs that you came up with? Well, yeah, like I said, we started so a lot of these songs we wrote at school. Maybe not a lot, maybe like three to four. There's like 15 songs on the album. Yeah. 
And uh, in our second year, Bill Finn invited us to do two nights at a, his cabaret at Barrington Stage Company. Uh, and he said, you're gonna, these, you're gonna definitely use, you know, <laughs> these four songs and then you can do whatever you else you want. So Lauren kind of created these two characters, Anne and Clay, that are in Regretting Almost Everything. And then we also kind of told Lauren's story. And, and then, you know, like we had some other songs. We were just like, we like this song that we wrote. Let's put it in. And, and it was kind of just like this cabaret. And then we did that again in New York at 54 Below um, and rewrote some songs like you were mentioning, songs that just we either didn't like or we thought we could improve the story. And then we kind of put it on a shelf. Um, and then uh, a good friend, Rachel Shankin, mentioned that, you know, the world needs more two-person musicals. And she really pushed us to cut the fat, cut the things that don't have to do with Anne and Clay and, and write a two-person book musical. Uh, so in doing that, we found all these holes, like we're missing all these songs if we're telling this long story of these two people who meet fall in love and you're hitting all these big life moments having children um and then you know as you get older yep. you know discovering things that you don't like about the other person and so on um and so and we just kept writing songs and and having little readings just you know with friends a couple people around a table and people being like like, I forget who was like, you don't have a song. They never sing about their kids. You need a song about the kids. So then we wrote, was... we made kids, which is going to be our first single, which comes out uh, on on this Friday, February something. I don't know, 9th or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I think, I mean, that was my, that was kind of what I was thinking, Lauren. Do you have a different? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Like how, like we have this, this album. Oh, oh, how did we do it? Well, I mean, it was partly the way Bill Finn's lyric writing class worked is he would give you a prompt and it would be, um, I'm trying to think. Oh, like there was a, like a song about driving. Or yeah, or a song. One of them was a song about write, write about Thanksgiving. And when I was in my first year of school, my granddaughter, my first granddaughter was born on my birthday when I was in school. And at Thanksgiving, I went, I, you know, I came home to Chicago and all four of the grandparents were there. And I wanted her, I wanted it to be clear that she liked me best. And I wrote a song called The Baby Likes Me Best. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and I've since become more mature and I no longer feel like that with respect to my other grandchildren and their other grandparents who are lovely. But um, <laughs> but in that moment, maybe because I wasn't there and she was my first. And so anyway, so when we, when we finished Bill's class, there were uh, some songs that had, you know, sort of come from my life. And when he offered us that cabaret at Barrington Stage, initially he just said, I'm gonna give you guys two nights write a show. And a month later, he said, by the way, you're going to write what only Lauren can write. You're going to write about being in a long marriage because everybody else, you know, is 25. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we had songs to begin with, but then we had to expand the story. So, but anyway, so yeah. you always know before it's produced, you you need the script in the songs before they can put it on stage. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so now I'm even more intrigued because the story really is your story or women like yourself who wake up one day and want to pursue what fills their heart. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, for my listeners out there, we're not saying that her heart didn't include family. But you need it. You need to do something for you yourself, and we're seeing more and more of that today, which I think is extremely important. Um, I know when I started this, um, my husband looked at me and he said, "Oh, it's going to be a hobby," and now it's like I never see you. You know, right. you're always right. recording something, and it's <laughs> like, you know, this is what I do, uh, and he is very supportive of it and I didn't have to leave home to do it so yeah. um 
the song that's coming supposed to come out tomorrow. Mm-hmm. What can you tell us about it? What kind of beat does it have? What kind of lyrics that we can, you know, get ourselves excited about? Danny. Yeah, so th- this is one of it's one of the newer songs that we've written for the show called We Made Kids. Um and and it was interesting. This I, I do remember that this song was, I think, started lyric first. And it it was tricky when I started because because again, Lauren's perspective is so I, what I love about it so much is it it has so much tenderness and 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 kindness, but it also has these like moments of just hilarity and just like I didn't see that coming in this song. I, I have no children, so I'm like trying to be like, how do I get in that headspace? I'll just write it about my dog, I guess, because <laughs> I love my dog so much. Um, and and I decided, and so the music I think is, you know, very beautiful, very, very calming, very loving. And when you put that against some of these lyrics that have a little bit more edge to them and humor, it it we're hoping it really creates this like synergy of what that moment is. Yeah. So Lauren, these were your thoughts that you gave to Danny about having children. Well, it's, well, it's me writing a lyric and yes, I mean, I have three children, but I, I will admit that having the, my daughter have children refreshed my recollection, (laughs) (laughs) but, but, you know, it's, 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 um, I mean, what I do remember is I mean, unless you're the rare person that thinks that you and your husband are somehow God's gift, right? You see that baby and you're like, how could two ordinary people like us create this perfectly beautiful thing that is a gift to the world, right? That's how you feel about your kids. It sure. makes you, right? It makes you crazy, right? Your perspective's so crazy because of how enchanted you are by them. and. But so, so the lyric also, though, will include things about how the poop smells so bad it scares the dog away, yet I wipe a tiny tushy and my insides get all mushy. So like, yeah. that's like the combination, right? Of I love it. Tenderness and truth and humor that Daddy Danny's talking about. I mean, my granddaughter still, she'll say, close your eyes. And when, cause, and I know when I open, it, open them, she's going to have both fingers up her nose and tell me she's <laughs> eating boogers. <laughs> so like all of that, I bring all of that to my writing. You know? Well, and you know what, when we listen to music, when we go to a cabaret, we want to be entertained mm-hmm. and that's what you're doing, but you're making it human enough that even if we didn't have kids, we right. probably remember when we did those things. Right. Um, right. You know, yeah. I'll, I remember when my oldest used to walk around like blowing his nose with his hand and I'd say, why are you doing that? And he goes, Kleenex is expensive. <laughs> and I had never told him that. And I looked at him and I said, no, it's not that expensive. <laughs> no, it is. And he turned the thing over and for some reason, it had like a hundred dollars on the bottom, like a, and he thought it was a hundred dollars. I said, I don't know what that's doing there. No, I think that box cost me fifty cents. You can use it, um, but you know, that was his interpretation. And every time, you know, he has terrible allergies, and he'll come to visit, and I have boxes of Kleenex out. Now it becomes a joke, you know. You right. can take from any box you want. So, you know, thank you for adding that into your music. So tomorrow, hopefully, song number one will come out. What's the title of it? We Made Kids. You Make Kids. Okay. Yeah, we and- made kids, and we did it without trying. <laughs> <laughs> For some people, that's so true. For others, well, we won't get into that today. Um, And then in March, the whole album is supposed to come out? Yeah, we're pretty sure that'll happen. (laughs) That's the (laughs) point, yeah. March March 14th on all streaming platforms. How wonderful. 
So you did a cabaret of this once, a two-night cabaret. Any chance you're going to do that again? Uh, never say never is the best answer. Okay. <laughs> to that question. okay. You just need to be invited somewhere to do it and get paid for it. I get it. Um, <laughs> I mean, ideally, we'll be able to do the full show. I think that's the goal of the album is the awareness, a calling card for us, showing off what we can do and hopefully getting people interested in actually doing this full version of the show. That that would be terrific. So it starts with getting people to listen to the album and get excited about it, get a visual, and then say, hey, now let's let's put it out there for everybody to see. Um, so I'm, I'm going to send my messages to all the people that I know, believe me. They don't, they're not up here. They're more like way <laughs> down here, but I'm going to tell them anyways. Um, when this is complete, do you have another project that you're working on together or independently? We do. Um, before we got swallowed by this project, <laughs> we were, we have a draft of a musical called Mimosa and our protagonist is a plant. It's a family friendly musical. Um, the message is sort of that by working together, plants and humans can repair the planet one garden at a time. And it's the other sort of bigger goal is to introduce audiences to the fact that plants are sentient, intelligent um, beings with agency and ethical wow. standing. So, but it it feels very, I mean, that sounds serious, but it is family friendly, it feels very Disney Pixar. And the spine of the story is the relationship between this young girl and this plant. Who, I love that. Um, right, whose friendship reminds every everyone else what the proper relationship between humans and plants should be. Well, a very important message in today's world, that's for sure. Uh, and I don't take it lightly. So yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait to see where that comes along. You know, I'm looking at the two of you and it's obvious you both come from slightly different generations, which I'm so happy to see that collaborative because I hear too often. Um, no, I'm not going to have anything in common. No, uh, you know, Maybe that other person should be retired. Maybe that other person should go play with their Legos. Uh, but this warms my heart because I have seen ageism at its worst. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that we actually have you on screen and our listeners can see that. You know what? If, if you love what you're doing, you can work with another person who loves what they're doing as well. And you're in California, Danny, and Lauren's in New York, and technology brings you together, which I think is even better. Yes. So is there anything currently on Broadway or off Broadway that even resembles this, this theme at all? Oh my goodness. I know, big question. No, well, I'm just thinking it's it's very, I mean, the show itself is very balanced between these two characters. So even though it's told from Anne's perspective, Clay pretty much has equal time on stage, you know, and part of that is because we care equally about them and because we want to keep it interesting for the audience, I mean, there are all kinds of reasons to do that. Sure. Um, but it is hard to think of musicals where the protagonist is a middle-aged woman who's also a mom or just a middle-aged woman. Can you think of any, Danny? <laughs> no, not really. That the protect, like the main character, no. I don't think so. There was that one... What was the one that they did at Encores? It was, oh God, it's a, uh, I can't remember. There are very few of them because there haven't been middle-aged women who are moms. I mean, there haven't been very many middle-aged women writing musicals. And to the extent there have been, there have been very few who are moms. It's more common for mothers to be writing for theater now. 
Um, Interesting. But very few where I, you know, where I am in life. Well, and I'm that perspective. Well, I'm glad you are where you are in life. Uh, <laughs> you are absolutely wonderful. I can't wait till tomorrow. Um, in fact, I will uh, you know, make sure that I have my cell phone with me so I can listen and share it while I'm working. Um, but I want to tell our listeners, you know, pay for the music, please. Pay for the music. Writers like Lauren and Danny, um, they're not writing for their health. You may love what you're doing, but they need to be paid for what they do. And it's the big thing that we talk about every time we do an entertainment interview is if you'd like something, pay for it. And downloading something off the internet is not all that expensive. And I think it's just, well, worth it. And especially if we want to see this on the stage again, because I certainly do. I want you to come to Cleveland and I can get to meet you and, and see a <laughs> wonderful play. Uh, any last words you want to say about this and what's coming out? I, I think I would just say, yeah, regretting almost everything. It's on all streaming platforms, March 14th. It's featuring the incredible Beth Level and the amazing Jeff Blumenkrantz, just two of the best, smartest, funniest, warmest people and actors uh, and performers ever, uh, definitely living. Um, yeah, there's, I think, 15 songs. Uh, it also features an incredible eight-piece band four strings and a rhythm section and some of the, the best musicians in New York City. Um, yeah, and we just hope hope you listen, hope you like it. Please let us know what you think. That's wonderful. And Lauren, any last words? Last words? I mean, my last words are not so much about the album. I, I mean, what I really want to say to people is I never had a plan I wrote my first song for my children's middle school because I thought it would be fun 20 years ago. I did, I never, anything that's come, I didn't see coming, <laughs> you know, and you probably know this too. You just say, okay, <laughs> keep showing up. And, you know, you wind, you don't know where you're going to wind up, but you know, if you don't do that, you, you're going to be wherever you are now. And if you you're are. happy, that's terrific. Right. And so this whole idea about having a goal or a path or a, pl a plan, I don't think you necessarily need to wait for that. I think you just do the first thing that's in front of your face that looks interesting or like it might be fun. I totally agree with you. And I'll tell you, uh, the other day, somebody gave me another idea uh, for the podcasting. And I said, hmm, okay. And then somebody else said to me, you can take on one more thing. And I said, why not? <laughs> it looks good. It's interesting. And that's yeah. how the two of you seem to live your lives. So thank you so very much for joining us. We will put all this information in the show notes. So for those of you listening, you'll know exactly when everything is coming out. And uh, do you have websites that we can follow you at? Either one of you? The show has a website. It's just okay. regretting, it's regretting almost everything.com. We'll make sure we put that in there as well. Yeah. And then from there, you can find everything and us. Sounds wonderful. Well, again, thank you very much. Best of luck. And uh, we'll you. see you when you come to Cleveland. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Yes. All right. Take <laughs> Thanks, care Karen. now. Bye-bye. Thanks, Karen. Thanks so much. Sure.